If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf, and what do we have here? This is my... I'm a vintage player now, and this is my first vintage homebrew. Not first vintage deck, just homebrew. This is Vidalkin Storm. You're counting that correctly, 27 singletons before we even get into the lands and sideboard. Let's start with our top row, our enablers, I suppose. It's called Vidalkin Storm because it plays four copies of Vidalkin Archmage. Whenever you cast an artifact spell, draw a card. This is sort of like Paradoxical Outcome, but on steroids. So if you're familiar with Vintage Paradoxical Storm, you know what this does. Return any number of target non-land, non-token permanents to their owner's hands. To Yeah, and then you draw a card for each card. Return your hand this way. Yeah, okay. Cool. Vidalkin Archmage does that, but kind of on steroids. Because it's every time you cast one. And we have a few neat little tricks in this deck, some of which we're not even playing. Uh, but we could, and we'd get a little more power, but there are reasons for not doing that. So in any case, if you want to think of these two together, you know, it, one of the issues with Paradoxical Storm and Vintage is that you only have four copies. Five if you count Emergent Scroll. That means less than half the time you'll start with one in your opening hand. With Archmage 2, you have eight, or again, nine with Merchant Scroll. That is quite a lot. That means that in most games, you'll have at least one in your opening hand. And you can go to town. You can go crazy when you have those. So Archmage does have blue-blue in its cost, and outcome you're seeing only has blue. And that is really important. Archmage may be more powerful, but for that reason, it's a little bit less consistent, to be sure. That said, Whenever you cast an artifact spell, you draw a card. This thing has been insane. Oh my goodness. Okay, so it, it, other than that, it essentially runs like you would expect a normal paradoxical deck to run. Our wing con, though, we start off with one laboratory maniac. We have so much draw power, we can actually draw through our deck, and we can even re beat prison pieces like ensnaring bridge as a result. Uh, so that's one. Of course, we have the Time Machine, Time Vault, and Voltaic Key. And if you know anything about Vintage, if you've ever played Vintage, then you know what this thing does. You get infinite turns. Time Vault comes in tapped, but if you untap it, you do that by skipping a turn. Or by playing Voltaic Key, <laughs> and then you tap it and you get an extra turn, yada yada. Now, Tinker is in the deck, but there is no Blightsteel Colossus. Tinker is usually getting one of our Time Machine pieces, either Time Vault or Voltaic Key whichever one we don't have. In a pinch, we can also get something else. I've never come across that, but you could, theoretically. And then there's Tezzeret the Seeker, which can go and get whatever we need in the moment. It can go get, once again, another uh, Time Vault or Voltaic Key piece. I said it. I think he's a he. Tezzeret's a he. Whatever. Who cares? Or you can get a Black Lotus. You can get whatever the situation calls for. In variants of this deck that have prison pieces, you can go and get those. Now... That's all well and good. Now, look at all this. We have our, our Black Lotus, one of each Moxon, because we get awesome benefits off of those. This is a little bit unusual. Mox Opal is something that you see in Paradoxical Storm decks, but not usually as a four of. That's because there's a bit of an opportunity cost. They are legendary artifacts, after all. However, even if you already have one, with Vidalkin Archmage, you can still draw a card. So, they're not useless in this, so we run the full playset. Chrome Mox. You'll see how many blue cards we have in here. Chrome Mox is definitely not dead. It is two for one in yourself, but we need that mana that badly. Speaking of, there's Mana Crypt. <laughs> Good grief, this card. There's Soul Ring. EDH. <laughs> there's Mana Vault. Good grief, this card. And then there's Sensei's Divining Top. Now, some of you may have put this together... Two Sensei's Divining Tops gets ridiculous with Archmage, because you can simply, uh, after you play one and draw the card with Archmage out, you can uh, tap it, put it on top of your deck, draw a card, play another top, draw a card, tap it, put it on top of your deck, draw the first top, play that top, and so on and so forth. You can loop them together. But I have a hard time finding room for another one. 
so that's why we only have one. Normally, you don't play more than one anyway because there's that... Uh, well, you could, certainly, just to increase your consistent, uh, consistency. You don't get nearly as much out of the extra copies, though. But in this deck, you actually could, if I could just decide. I, maybe I take out one of the cantrips for Windfall. Speaking of, we're on our cantrips now. Ancestral Recall because blue deck, of course. Brainstorm because Ancestral Recall. Uh, we do have enough fetch lands that I think playing Brainstorm is fine here. We also have Ponder, same. We have enough fetch lands to make it much more reasonable, I think. Preordain is a little iffy. It could have been the second top, but I think that we're okay with having this here. Gitexium Probe. Phil it's... It's a free card. This is your up... I was about to say upstart goblin. <laughs> Patrick Hoban, shoutouts to you. This is just a free card you get to cycle through for. And you get to look at your opponent's hand to see whether or not it's safe to go off. Repeal is such a sexy card in this deck. Because you get to return a Moxin, for instance, and draw a card. You can also return an opponent's prison piece, although, unfortunately, you can't return Chalice of the Void, which is the main one you'd want to a lot of the time, uh, because X is going to have to equal zero, and at that point, the CMC is one, which is often where Chalice is. Sometimes it's on zero. Often against you, it'll be zero if the opponent knows what they're doing, in which case, yeah, you can repeal it. If it's one, though, you're in trouble. Okay. Thought cast. Uh, we have enough artifacts. We can get affinity for artifacts all the way to four and draw two cards for one mana. It competes with Thirst for Knowledge. I don't know which one I need more of. I'm experimenting with both. If you have any input, by all means, let me know. Merchant Scroll gets Paradoxical Outcome or a Counterspell or just Ancestor Recall. Whatever we think we need in the moment. Thirst for Knowledge. Uh, I did just mention this. This is a, uh, this is a pretty good card. Could be another thought cast, or thought cast could be this. Gets you a little bit deeper in your deck, but you do have to discard an artifact. Um, so I'm not sure. Time walk, because it gives us an extra. T worst case scenario, it just cycles essentially. It just gives us an extra turn, get an extra land drop. Uh, we can untap our lands or an artifacts and go at it another turn if we happen to run pretty low on mana or see we won't be able to finish them off just yet. So that's important. Um, yeah, well and good. Time Twister. <laughs> reload. You get to play everything in your hand, Time Twister, reload, and then go off again. Windfall, much the same. Certainly not as good as Time Twister, of course, because you're not guaranteed to get seven cards, and it has discard as part of its uh, issue. Which is to say, uh, you might turn on a dredge player accidentally. But that being the case, I think it's worth it to play Windfall. If you go off, if you're on the play and you have Windfall and your opponent still has seven cards in their hand, then it looks a lot like Time Twister. You just get to reload back to seven. Whew! Okay. Cool. Now, we do have a small, a relatively small, counterspell suite. We have four Force of Will, of course, as you do. A Pact of Negation, so a better Force of Will, but only on the turn we're comboing off. Of note, you can actually reasonably pay that mana cost if you need to. You actually can do that with all of the mana rocks in this deck. And then two mental missteps, because we have to fight so many, um, well, other mental missteps. We have to fight Ancestral Recall. We have to fight cards like um, Voltaic Key and an Opposing Time Vault, uh, etc. And I'm sure it's more than that. Now... I only have five blue fetch lands. They could, these could be any. It doesn't really matter what the order is. I went with Misty Rainforest because shoutouts to Glistener Elf. Uh, and then Island. But you must play this particular island because, well, that art. I am a 13-year-old boy in a 27-year-old man's body. And then a Tolarian Academy because we have so many artifacts, there's no reason not to. Now... You may notice I'm missing what should be a really important card in this list. An artifact that you'll find in Paradoxical Storm that's not here. It is Expedition Map. That is almost certainly the, it is almost certainly the case that you need to have that card to play an ideal version of this list. Honestly, I don't know what I'd cut. I know that's bad. I should try it otherwise. But I don't know. Maybe Thirst? Maybe Windfall? I can't cut Time Walk, can I? No. I, uh, it's tough. I don't want to go down another mental misstep. Ooh, 
So finding where to f make room for expedition map is the trick, but you almost certainly want to have map. Uh, especially with Archmage, because with paradoxical outcome, one of the paradoxes is, do I play my expedition map so that I can, or do I, and let me rephrase that, do I pop my expedition map so I can get my academy, or do I keep it out so that I can return it with outcome? There's much less of a cost here in this deck because of Archmage. There almost certainly should be expedition map. I'm trying it without. Uh, because of all this draw power, you can draw into it pretty easily, so I don't know that it needs it, but it, it should should have it. Now for the sideboard. One of Bribery plays against Oath and other big creature decks. Chain of Vapor deals with a lot of hate cards. Cool. Three Flusterstorms because of opposing storm decks and other blue control. Uh, Hercules Recall is a little obvious, right? Deals with Workshops decks. Mindbreak Trap, again, deals with Storm. Ravenous Trap deals with Dredge and other graveyard decks, potentially. And Steel Sabotage, again, more with Shops. As you can imagine, Shops is, by a substantial margin, our worst matchup, I, uh, in my experience. Uh, you, know, you, you don't have too many counterspells to stop a prison piece, and if they land one prison piece, especially if its name is Trinisphere or Chalice, then you are just in for a world of hurt. Uh, Lodestone Golem is also a bit of a pain and happens to be a win con for them. That thing is restricted for a reason. And I will get some more games on here with this deck. So take care, Magic Community. I hope you've enjoyed this brews. If you have any suggestions, this brew, if you have any suggestions, then please let me know in the comments below. And this is not the only deck. I put out a Twitter poll a bit ago about all these different vintage decks I want to play. I have Vintage Infect coming up. I have Vintage High Tide. That's going to be fun. And I have a Vintage Wizard Tribal I want to give a shot. All right. Take care, Magic Community, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.